Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the actionsandtrader.com nightly rapid show. Happy Monday. Hope everybody is doing well. Raining here all day. Can't let the weather dampen you down. Your your all your uh, emotions, all that stuff, because it kind of flows into your trading. You got to be really, really uh, focused. But yes, the weather sucks here. It's in New Jersey. I'm sure there's a lot of parts of the Northeast that are soaked as well. But again, here we are. Life goes on. So let's talk about the tape. So we talked about on uh, the weekend video the importance of uh, the bottom channel here of 369 on the Qs. Well, it held it again. Okay, that's the good news. It held it again. You can see the pre-market lows today. Uh, it held it again. Um, so you had some headlines coming out uh, prior to the open, um, you know, all over the place. You had some macro headlines. Uh, Norio Rubini, uh, support, uh, uh, an economist, uh, he warned about a 10% poten potential plunge uh, for the stock market going into the latter part of the year in early 2024. You had um, you had Morgan Stanley analyst uh, Wilson uh, told his clients that they're, it's, they're in for a rocky uh, potential 2024. You had Goldman Sachs coming out uh, ahead of the, the day today, uh, trimming the estimates on the 2023-2024 uh, earnings of Tesla. You had a lot of negative uh, connotations to start the day. Uh, as you can imagine, a couple of days before the FOMC meeting, a lot of traders weren't really that too enthusiastic to make a stand. You could see that very, very clearly and very early uh, in the options market. No really big bets uh, one way or, or another. Uh, a lot of traders are waiting uh, for the FOMC minutes to see exactly uh, where they stand with rates. Probably it's going to be uh, another rise with the language followed of well, we're still monitoring inflation. We still don't like where it is, blah, 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 blah. We continue to act based on uh, resolution and pe based on data that we select. So I don't think anything uh, is, is going to be crazy. But the point is we are still stuck in this range. And I think that's the most important part uh, as far as an, if you're an intraday trader or even just a swing trader, whatever the case may be, we are stuck within channels. We talked about this uh, 370 level to the upside in the queues. And now the queues have held... 369 three separate times so again if you haven't figured out what the line in the sand is uh for the bears well it's the line in the sand is this 369 level if we, if the bulls can give up this 369 level uh we're gonna go lower we're gonna go absolutely lower if the bears can give up this 378 level we're gonna go higher until then we are stuck uh it stinks from the point of macro resolution it does stink because if you look at today's session you had some stocks we're good, right? So some stocks were, were were good, some stocks were bad, some stocks were kind of in between. Uh, you had Amazon weak, you had Microsoft weak, you had Apple very very strong today. You can make an argument had a dead cat bounce from the bottom range, but nevertheless uh, very very strong. You had Tesla after uh, Goldman cut its uh, estimates, it was weak. Nvidia, we talked about this uh, on the weekend. You know, if it could lose potentially Friday's channel, it could get hit. Well, unfortunately, it got hit, and we I didn't get a chance to trade it because it literally, it was up like a dollar and change pre-market, and next thing you know, it went down to, and it just went down 10. It just went down 10. I uh, went as low as to 420. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it because it, the whole move happened pre-market, but if you got some, congratulations. But it was very impressive that uh, NVIDIA kind of re, just kind of rebounded, just manned up, right? Remounted and won green in the day. Is it possible we get a you know a second kind of dead cat bounce day tomorrow? Sure, absolutely. I mean the stock has gotten uh, hit from this 451 level all the way down to 420. Um, you know what it really needs to do is recapture this five day moving average. If you look at the chart, it keeps on getting rejected off the five day. So I'd like to see if there's a potential dead cat bounce tomorrow into the five day, and we'll make some uh, adjustments uh, towards uh, there. Uh, other than that, if you look at the rest of uh, the semiconductor group. Uh, you know, you had again nice little bounces. Stocks have gotten really, really hit. Uh, you know, AM, you know, AMAT, uh, stock like, uh, you know, stock like Texan hasn't been 
uh, doing very, very well, but it's starting to kind of rebalance. But more important is kind of the disconnect. And this is this has kind of been the theme of 2023. If you look at where kind of the, some of the strength was today, it was, uh, you know, some insurance names. A lot of names are going to jump out the page. But if you look at Aflac, if you look at um, MetLife, if you look at AIG, right, they're holding up uh, relatively very well. Uh, you know, a lot of the financial names uh, actually held up. A big disconnect in technology names. Um, retail continues, you know, continues to get hit. I mean, look, I mean, look at Kohl's, right? It continues to get hit. So we're kind of all over the place. And this is where, when you look at, uh, you know, when you look at uh, spies and when you look at the at the queues, they're 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 giving you pretty much a mirror image of what you're seeing with all these different groups. Some strong, some weak. And this is why we can't get out of this range because all of these groups have to be in the same direction. So we continue to watch uh, on the spies. We continue to watch this 442 area to the downside. We continue to watch uh, the QQQs, the RE69 uh, to the downside as well. It's going to be very, very important uh, going into, especially the FOMC minutes uh, to kind of understand uh, where your levels are. So 378 to the upside, 369 to the downside. Uh, would it shock me to have one more slower day tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I, nothing shocks me. Again, I still think uh, you can get some pretty good value uh, every single day. So, for example, today uh, we had uh, Tesla in the room, right? Tesla, we, we lost the five-day, 470, got down to 463. You know, I'm going to watch Tesla, right? I'm going to watch Tesla uh, for tomorrow. If it can lose uh, the 10-day moving average, you know, there's a good chance that it, it, it gets hit. So there's a two-sided re, you know, request here on Tesla. And again, I always look at the stock. I don't look at it, which you know, I'm not biased on direction. So if it could reclaim the upside, which is a five-day moving average, you definitely want to go along. If it loses the 10-day moving average, which is the birth of the trade, obviously you want to take a, a short position. Um, some names uh, I started swings in on uh, over the weekend. Um, let's start off with the one that's not working yet. Uh, car gurus. Uh, I started shorting this thing on Friday. Uh, not a big move. It's only up 22 cents. Basically, anemic volume inside day. You know, I'm hopeful as long as it doesn't reclaim uh, the five-day moving average. I'm just, you know, I'm gonna let the swing play out. If it starts losing this bottom channel from Friday's lows, it should go lower. But the one that really did well today, we talked about this on the on the video, was Peloton. Right, shorted Peloton. Uh, this is the earnings lows, and that's kind of been my, you know, the kind of been my bread and butter swings uh, for years and years and years. But Peloton, uh, what we talked about in the weekend video, lost, you know, lost its earnings lows that 505 area, and today almost an eight and a half percent move to the downside. Really, really good move. Uh, I'm still holding the runner uh, for maybe a potential four dollar move uh, for the next, you know, in the next foreseeable future. It would be nice, but it would be nice. But this one uh, definitely worked out uh, very, very well. Uh, Square was another name broke down today below. Uh, it's earnings lows. This thing looks like it's low, low and going low in prices. There's a couple of names. I, I want to give you guys a couple of names uh, to watch over the next several days. Again, my favorite setups continue to be, at least on, on swing potential, uh, are these earnings lows. Look at Goodyear Tire. Again, it's not sexy, right? Peloton is not a sexy trade. It's not a sexy uh, it's, you know, type of symbol, but it's it's effective. And, once, and again, guys, once these things start losing their earnings lows, you know, they're, they're, they just drift for, for, for days and weeks. So I'm watching Goodyear Tire again. doesn't necessarily have to confirm tomorrow, but I'm definitely watching Goodyear Tire through this bottom range. Uh, look at a name like Domo, right? Same thing. You know, again, doesn't necessarily have to trigger tomorrow. But, you know, again, if this thing starts taking earnings lows, this thing looks uh, really good as well. Uh, you know, look, look at a name, for example, like Overstock, right? Overstock, you know, had a, a big move down on earnings, and this thing is very close to losing its earnings lows. I, I definitely want to watch this thing for the next couple of days. And a name like Letter U, right? Letter U today, it almost broke down today, got saved by the Bollinger Band. You know, I want to watch the bottom of this channel here for the next couple of days. If this thing starts breaking down, well, we can get a, a bigger move to the downside. And, and, and I know it feels like, you know, all I've been talking about is short, 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 short in the last couple of days. But look at, I mean, look at these charts. I mean, show me a really good looking chart, right? I mean, other, you know, if you could find something that tech in the technology space, something, uh, you know, just in tech in general, I would love to listen. But boy, oh boy, it's very, very tough uh, to find good looking charts when the queues are straddling the bottom of the range. Now, if you were in the top of the range, it'd be a whole different conversation, right? Because more stocks would be trading to the top of the range in the bottom. But since we're on the bottom, 
you know, again, it's not that I'm bearish. I'm just taking the information that I'm getting at the close and applying it for the next trading day. So uh, going into tomorrow, again, we know the macro levels on the queues. Uh, I'm watching uh, Tesla potentially a two-sided trade. If it reclaims the five-day, I will go long. If it loses today's channel on the 10-day, I will go short. I like overstock I'm watching for tomorrow. I'm watching this Goodyear tire, this Domo uh, for potential uh, earnings lows uh, plays. Uh, Peloton, I'm keeping a runner. This uh, Car Gurus, I'm going to give it a couple more days to let it play out. But more importantly, guys, again, we are you know a couple of days away from the FOMC. I, I, again, I don't think we're going to see dramatic order flow one way or another. Again, I could be absolutely wrong, but I don't think we're going to see dramatic order flow one way or another ahead of uh, the FOMC minutes. But we'll see. You know, we'll see. We're always optimistic. So that's it, guys. We know our levels. Today was a little bit more quiet than normal. If you traded Tesla today, good job. If you traded uh, some NVIDIA today, great job. If you came along Peloton, great job. Now we're just babysitting our car gurus and seeing exactly what happens next. Guys, everybody have a great night. Stay blessed, everybody. God bless. Stay healthy. I will talk to you guys all tomorrow.